is a, a, a merger of two companies with potentially two of the most ambitious uh, strategies for completely like taking the concept of traditional content and like molding it like silly putty into the digital age. And uh, obviously AOL under Tim Armstrong has had this really ambitious strategy in place, has been very vocal about it. The turnaround has not come yet. And some people are saying that, you know, having to post is a quote unquote Hail Mary pass. Um, this is the overused term day after the Super Bowl. And or, or what, mm -hmm. quote unquote the, a Hail Mary pass. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and others are saying that this could give AOL what it needs. So those of you who are and are not affiliated with that decision. Uh, do, you, do you want to sound off on, on what, what does the Huffington Post mean to AOL and what does AOL mean to the Huffington Post? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say this. We're, we're tremendously excited about the opportunity and it, and it is true. We are. Um, I've been with the Huffington Post for almost four years. And uh, when I think where we were, the unique visitors we were reaching then, and what we just did this last month, I can't wait for Comscore to come out. It's just, it was an incredible month. And we, we just celebrate every hour of stats at HuffPost and suffer a bad hour. And so um, the, the reach that it gives us, this, this new audience and uh, it, on top of it, it, it's really exciting from our perspective. And there's a lot of like to figure out between now and then, you know, it's the deal closing and et cetera, but it, it, is, it is a really exciting time. Yeah, that's what, what I think is interesting about it, and Tim Armstrong, I saw a couple interviews with him yesterday on TV, he often compares it to Disney, where it's not necessarily like all the properties necessarily fit together. I mean, I think there's a lot of overlap, perhaps, between some of the properties that AOL now owns. Um, but I think one of the advantages you have of bringing those all under one roof is actually on the technology side. So AOL can invest in R&D and tablet apps and mobile apps, and then all the publications that they own can, in theory, use that technology that they're developing um, and, and get some scale from owning what, at the surface, seems like properties that aren't necessarily connected or compete with each other. But I think you get if, you, if they build a strong competency in tech and ad sales, it will give them a lot of advantages over other publishers. And John, maybe uh, speaking as, as someone who, who's obviously very very familiar with um, with, with the, with the techno, technological side of, of HuffPost, you, you must be worked with them very early on, correct? Right? Well, the, the two companies are totally separate. Oh, yeah. Jonah they they have very, very kind of common origins. I mean, Jonah was, a, was one of the founders of HuffPost, is the founder of BuzzFeed, and I think you know we take a lot of inspiration from how Huffington Post has curated and built a technology platform um, around the news, and I think in a lot of ways we follow similar themes in terms of looking at social and social being kind of integral to the DNA of how news is distributed. So um, I think that what we're focused on more is just uh, you know, seeing how we can take these themes and bring them to brands and bring them to other publishers, and, you know, kind of track the web's hotness. So, uh, what are what are the odds? Is AOL going to screw this up? All exempt from this one. I know. Exempt, right? You're exempt. Oh, you're exempt. Yeah. You're exempt. <laughs> I'm not that. I would say no. Know. I think they're going to pull it off. I think AOL, and, and this comes back to the technology stuff, is like. There's so much innovation on the Huffington Post, like I follow like all the articles that come out about A-B testing and all this interesting stuff that those guys are up to. And if AOL can learn like 50% of that stuff, the rest of their properties I think are going to do much better than they are right now and the whole thing will, will rise up. And I, a lot of that, in my mind, was the reason for the acquisition more than the content, more than the Huffington name, more than any of these other things. It's all about sort of the, the capabilities that these guys have built to make like a real publishing platform that makes sense for all different types of people. Yeah, I think that companies like AOL have to do this sort of thing, right? I mean, it's really hard for enormous companies to kind of innovate on a level that, say, the Huffington Post could do, or Seeking Health, or any of the startups that have, have popped up over the last couple of years. And I think you'll probably see a lot more of it, right? You'll see a lot more 
news groups trying to figure out, well, instead of building all this in-house, there's some great, great content, great innovation, and great uh, thought leadership that we need to add to our stable. So I think you probably haven't seen the end of this. It's probably just the start. So, um, so let's uh, move on to something that's been 